Hi, I'm Dr. Mem, ear, nose and throat surgeon at the Melbourne ENT Group. In this explainer video, I'm going to talk to you about the use of corticosteroids medications in ear, nose and throat conditions. I will describe what they are, some of their common ear, nose and throat use, uses, the benefits, risks associated with taking them and some tips on how to best take them. So what are the corticosteroids? Corticosteroids are man-made drug, but they're made to mimic your normal hormone cortisol in the body. Both the hormone and the medications alter the immune response and the inflammation. In the ear, nose and throat, we use them for many conditions, and they can be taken orally, through the injections, or injections into local sites, such as vocal cords or eardrum. The examples include prednisolone, dexamethasone, or kinecord. What are the ENT conditions that require cause of oral corticosteroids? Well, the short-term high-dose corticosteroids are prescribed in a number of conditions. The most common use would be a sudden sensory neural hearing loss. Other, medication, other conditions include acute vertigo or dizziness, use in sinusitis, acute, subacute, exacerbations of chronic or perioperative use, and use in vocal cord dysphonia and, um, and voice loss. In acute certain sensory neural hearing loss, use of high dose corticosteroids can improve the chances of recovering the hearing by about 20%. However, certainly it is not a guarantee for a complete recovery of the hearing. In some cases, we can also inject the corticosteroids through the tympanic membrane perforation. At the moment, this is still semi-experimental and therefore not offered to every single patient. In, it certainly in vertigo, it can improve the symptoms. However, a specialist review is recommended to ensure that serious causes are excluded. In sinusitis, we use it in acute exacerbations of chronic rhinosinusitis, in acute sinusitis, and also around the surgery. In all cases, decreasing the inflammation can lead to improved symptoms. In the case of surgery, it can also translate to a safer surgical field as it decreases bleeding in most cases. We do not recommend using oral steroids long-term for, for sinusitis. However, using short course up to two weeks of corticosteroids two to three times a week is certainly acceptable. The intranasal use of steroids, such as Nasonex or similar sprays, are safe as the absorption into your system is negligible. As with any medication, there are indications and contraindications with corticosteroid use. If you do have any existing comorbidities and conditions, please advise your next specialist before getting prescribed corticosteroids. Some of the contraindications to using corticosteroids include diabetes mellitus and high blood sugar, currently poorly controlled infection, poorly controlled blood pressure, some mental health issues, anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, and suicidal ideation. Advanced age makes the use of steroids slightly less uh, safe. Dementia, cataracts, glaucoma, peptic ulcer disease, and some liver disease, as well as excessive alcohol consumption, can certainly make the use of steroids less safe. Sometimes we can still use them in those conditions, but it may require other medications and more closer follow-up. What are the common side effects that we see with short-term steroids? This usually includes insomnia and increased appetite, Sometimes an exacerbation of mental health issues, especially if one has pre-existing health conditions. Delirium and confusion are rare side effects and usually occur in people with dementia or uh, elderly people. The blood pressure and diabetes control can get worsened. And if you have peptic ulcer disease or acid hypersecretion, that can make worse. Glaucoma and cataracts can also be exacerbated. There is a rare condition called a vascular necrosis of the joint that can occur in about one in 300 people prescribed corticosteroids. If you experienced any shoulder or hip pain or any other joint pain, you should stop the medication and see your med specialist or your GP immediately. In elderly, apart from confusion and delirium, sometimes steroids can cause balance problems as well. So how do, you how do I take oral corticosteroids? 
Doses will be prescribed to you by your doctor. If the course is more than one week, usually there will be a tapering dosing. We recommend taking the medications with food or straight after food to decrease their acid hypersecretion side effect. It would be good to take the medication the first half of the day with breakfast or lunch to decrease the insomnia later in the day. Ideally for the first two doses, as with most medications, should be taken when someone is around to ensure there are no serious side effects. Thank you for watching the video. For more information on ET conditions and procedures, please visit our YouTube channel or website where you can also download information sheets.